Hi everyone, this is Dr. Brian MacDonald, author of Practical Stress Analysis with Finite Elements, and this is the first in a series um, of videos entitled FEA 101, which we're going to cover the basics of finite element analysis. So we're going to start off today right at the beginning and we're going to answer the question, what is finite element analysis? So the first thing we, we need to talk about is, well, finite element analysis uses a mathematical technique, and this technique is called the finite element method. So essentially, finite element analysis is the application of the finite element method. So our description here says, finite element analysis uses a mathematical method called the finite element method, FEM, to obtain approximate solutions to engineering and scientific problems. So if you're here and you're looking at this video, it's very likely you've seen pictures like the ones shown here um, on the bottom uh, right where you see um, a, a object divided up into lots of um, squares or triangles and lots of colored contours shown overlaying on those squares or triangles. So let's just briefly talk about what we're what's been shown here. So on the left here we can see we have um, an engineering problem. We have a tin plate, it's got three holes in it, it's bolted to a, a, a wall or a secure surface on the, the left hand side um, holes and there's a pin through the right hand side holes and there's some kind of a load placed on that pin. So what the finite element analysis does here is it makes a model of the plate which in this case is a 2D um, plane stress uh, model. It divides that model up into lots of very very simple shapes and then it um, uses um, the finite element method to solve the problem. Okay, so it tells us, well, due to that applied load and those boundary conditions or bolts, what happens to the plate? Well, the, the, the figure B here shows us how the plate deforms, and the figure C here shows us what the stress distribution is in the plate. So in this case, it's uh, a von Mises or an average stress. Okay, so let's delve a bit more into, well, what exactly is the finite element method then? If, 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 if FEA finite element analysis is applying the finite element method, then it's important that we know what the finite element method is. So a very simplistic um, description of the finite element method is as follows. The FEM involves dividing the region of interest, which in our case is the plate, into smaller regularly shaped pieces known as elements. So these elements have very simple shapes such as squares or triangles and they're connected together at nodes which are the specific points on each element which are usually at the corners of the square or triangle. The partial differential equations that govern the problem can then be relatively easily solved for these simple shapes and the overall solution from all the simple shapes can be glued together to form a solution for the overall problem. So we've already introduced a couple of um, difficult sounding terms there. We've talked about partial differential equations. We'll get into that in a minute. We'll explain what they are and, and what we're talking about there. But essentially, they are equations that describe how the problem behaves. Um, so if it's a plane stress problem or a plane strain problem or so on or a beam problem, there'll be different types of, of equations that, that govern how that behaves. Um, so just in terms of elements and nodes, if we take our um, our plate again, which is shown in figure A here, and if we were to zoom in on a little part of the plate, you can see that we've got um, four square elements or quadrilateral elements. So quadrilateral means four-sided elements. And if we take a look at one of those elements, then it's got a node at each of its corners. And the elements are joined together at these nodes. So this node here is joining this element and that element together, the shaded element and the element above it. So this is a very, very simplistic description of the finite element method. Um, it's, it attempts to put it into more understandable English. If you were to go and pick up a book on the finite element method or, or, or look online, it would probably give you a more involved des description. So the kind of description you would find would be something like this, that's shown on this page. So on this page, we're going to throw out a lot of terms which we're going to um, describe and explain in subsequent slides. So let's just jump into it. Well, what is the finite element method? The finite element method divides the domain of interest into smaller subdomains called finite elements, and the solution of the governing partial differential equations is approximated by a simple polynomial function in each element. So you can see this is a quite more complicated description. So in our case, the domain of interest is our plate. 
The smaller subdomains are, are the elements that we just talked about. The governing partial differential equations will be the equations which describe how the plate behaves. And this simple polynomial function is um, an interpolation function that we'll, we'll talk about in a minute. So these polynomials then can be pieced together to give an approximate solution over the entire domain. It's very important, I, you'll see me keep on using the term approximate here. Finite, the finite element method or finite element analysis only ever gives an approximate solution to a problem. You know, we're, we're, we're trying to model nature usually using a computer or using mathematics. You're not going to get the exact answer, we're, we're going to get quite close to it. So it's going to, always going to be an approximate solution, it's never going to be the exact solution. So once this approximate solution is, is available over the entire plate, at this stage a variational integral is used to evaluate the sum of contributions from each individual element to give an optimum value at each node. And the end result of all this is to produce a set of simultaneous algebraic equations for the unknown values at the nodes. And we can solve this set of equations by applying boundary conditions and initial conditions to give us a list of the unknown value at each node. So what is the unknown value? So that's what we're trying to find. In general, in a stress analysis problem, that is the displacement or movement of each node. So if we go back to the previous slide for one second, um, sorry, the previous one again. So you can see here in the figure in the bottom right, uh, the first um, result we got in number B here was actually the, the displacement of the plate. So the movement of every node in the plate is, is plotted there. So that's what that's showing us. That's, so we're looking to try and find that. The movement of each of these nodes or displacement of each of these nodes is the unknown value that we're trying to find. And once we have that, we can get our deformed shape and then later on we can get stress from that as well. So it's going back to our description then as well. We solve it using boundary conditions. So back with our plate, again, our plate was held at two of the holes. They would have been the boundary conditions. And the initial conditions, well, the initial condition in our case is the load that was applied. So after we have that um, list then basically of the displacement of all the nodes, the same simple polynomial function that we used at the beginning, so at the top up there to approximate the partial differential equations in the elements, that same one can be used again to find the unknown value at any point in the domain. So it can be used to find the displacement of any point within the plate, not just at the nodes. So the step above gives us the displacement of the nodes, and then using this polynomial function again, we can find the displacement of any point. So, you know, here we have a big question mark from the, from this guy here because there's a lot in this. There's a lot of terms in there, and I've highlighted the terms in different colors. And the next slide, we're going to try and attempt to to pin down each of those terms and what it means for our particular problem. So I've already talked through this a bit in the previous slide, but just to really pin this down and be specific, let's take a look at an example. We we'll go back to our plate again and make, try and make sense of the above statement. So in this case, the domain of interest is the plate. The unknown value is going to be the displacement of the nodes. The initial conditions will be the applied load. The boundary conditions are going to be equal to the bolts. Um, so in other words, this this region of the plate here will be, will be held, won't be allowed to move because it's assumed to be bolted to a rigid body. The next question is the governing equations. Well, well what are they? So we need to kind of make a decision as to what you know, or, or do a bit of research and see what, what, what are the boundary conditions for this problem. So let's take a look at the problem. The plate is flat, okay, it's, it's, it's not curved, it's not coming out of the page. It's symmetrical about its mid-plane. Its thickness is much smaller than the other dimensions and all loads and reactions are in one plane. So again, we don't have any loads coming out of the page. They're all, they're all on the, the, the 2D surface of the page. This is a kind of a classical two-dimensional plane stress problem. Okay, so when all the loads are in the one plane, the plate is flat, and the thickness um, dimension is much smaller than the other dimensions. So classic two-dimensional plane stress analysis. So what does that mean? So we can go to um, a book on classical mechanics or stress analysis or go on the internet and we can look up the equations for two-dimensional plane stress. 
and these are well known and here are the well known governing equations for a two dimensional plane stress problem such as the problem we're looking at here. So first of all we have the um, a internal equilibrium equations for plane stress and these relate the internal stresses in the plate to the body forces that act on the plate. So the internal stresses are, are here, so this is stress in the x direction, this is stress in the y direction and we have a shear stress in the x y direction between them. And then the body forces um, here, the fxb and fxy, or the, in the x direction and y direction, arise from gravitation or inertial forces that may be acting on the plate. So these equilibrium equations then must be satisfied at all inter interior points in the plate. Then we have the constitutive equation here, um, which relate internal strains, which is shown here. So we have strain in the x, y, and shear strain to the internal stresses. So the shear stress in the x, y, and shear between the x, y directions. And they're related via this matrix here, which consists of the elastic modulus or Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio from the material that the plate is, is constructed from. Finally, then we have the kinematic equations. So these equations are also known as the strain displacement equations, and as their name suggests, they relate the displacements or deformations um, caused by the external forces acting on the plate to the internal strains in the plate. So here we have the internal strain in the x direction, which is related to u, which is strain in, or sorry, which is displacement in the x direction. Similarly, we have strain in the y direction related to v which is displacement in the y direction. And we have the shear strain here then, which is related to the, the two different displacements. So these three equations um, essentially govern the behavior of a plane stress problem. Um, so they can be manipulated then. We can manipulate these equations. We can do a little bit of fancy mathematics and we can put them together and we can use them to generate um, the governing partial differential equations, which are shown in the next slide. So these three equations can be combined and manipulated to give the governing partial differential equation for a plane stress problem. So depending on what approach you might want, you can either express them in terms of stresses, which is equation 1.05, so this is the same equation numbering as used in the book, or displacements, which is equation 1.06. So these are the same equations just looked at from a different perspective. So regardless of which approach is used then, like either the, the, the stress approach or the displacement approach, it's extremely difficult to find a solution to these um, equations for the majority of cases. So for something that's shaped like this with a few holes in it, we don't really have an answer. We don't know how to answer these equations. We can solve these equations for very simple problems such as rectangles under specific loading conditions um, or things like that. But other than that, there's very little that we can actually do with these equations. So we're in a kind of a, a, a difficult situation that we know that these equations are correct. We know that they describe the behavior of any plane stress problem, but we can't apply them to most problems. So we can only apply them to very, very simple problems. So going back to our plate then, where, where does that leave us? We have the equations that describe how it will, it will deform due to the applied load, but we have no way of solving these equations. So the usual solution to this is um, to use a numerical method to obtain an approximate solution to the problem. And the finite element method is a numerical method, and it's the one that we're, we're going to use here. Okay, so let's just go on and take a look at our problem then. If we, so if we, we know that we have now this partial differential equation here, and if we just go back to our list of things that we have to get, so again, just to put this back into context, here's our description, our very involved description of the finite element method, and it says things like domain of interest, partial differential equations, initial conditions, so on. And then in the next slide here will be defined what all of those were here. So we said we knew what our domain of interest and initial conditions and so on. The last thing we were left was, well, we need the governing equations. Now we've just found out what the governing equations are, and we've ended up at this point here. So now we have everything we need to implement the finite element method. So in this case, then, we've chosen to use um, the Q4 elements. So these are quadrilateral elements with four nodes, one on each corner. These elements use a particular set of interpolation functions, also known as shape functions, and these are the simple polynomial that approximates displacement within the element. So that was another thing on our list that we needed. So by picking that particular element, we've set 
what that simple polynomial is. So we can now solve the problem using the finite element method. And when we solve it, so here's our problem. It's broken up into um, smaller subdomains called finite elements. These finite elements are given a prescribed behavior, which is based on the partial differential equation we just looked at and the shape functions. And we can then solve that at the points which join the elements together, which are called the nodes. And that gives us a list of the displacement of each of the nodes. We can graphically manipulate that list to give us the deformed shape here. So using a little bit of computer number crunching, just taking that list of displacements and plotting it gives us the deformed shape. And we can further process that then to actually work out the, the stress in the plate or the stress in all the nodes and elements. So to recap then what we looked at today, well the finite element method um, can be used to obtain approximate solutions to solutions or to problems in engineering and the sciences. These problems are usually defined in terms of a set of partial differential equations as we saw. It's usually not possible to solve these problems directly. So as we said, we can solve them for simple problems, but we can't solve them for anything practical really. So a numerical method such as the finite element method must be used. To implement the finite element method, we need the following, a clearly defined problem domain, which is another way of saying a geometry, a set of boundary conditions or constraints, a set of initial conditions, which is the loads, the partial differential equations that describe the behavior of the domain, and then finally, a simple polynomial that approximates the PDEs within each element. And these are called shape functions or interpolation functions. So, um, we've covered today what is finite element analysis. We talked about how it's an implementation of the finite element method, and we provided two different descriptions of the finite element method, and we looked into exactly what it is and how it works. So, as usual, all of these videos are um, the more concise versions of what's contained in the book. So um, the material in the book is much expanded on what I'm talking about here today. So if you want to find out more about this, please do go and buy a copy of the book. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at, um, well, why do we need, now that we know what finite element analysis is, why do we need it? Why is it important? Why is it useful for engineers and scientists? And why is it used so much? Okay, so thanks for listening and I'll see you in the next video.